positive force as a loosely organized group of young people working together for social change. The group was started in 1985 by two punk rock bands, Mark Anderson and Kevin Madsen, who were growing disillusioned with what they saw as the punk rock movement's growing violence, drug use, and social and political apathy. About once a month, Positive Force organizes a benefit punk rock concert in the D.C. area. Over the past several years, they've raised more than $100,000 for a wide variety of local organizations, many of which are on the political left and don't have much money to begin with. Positive Force members also organize and participate in political demonstrations and perform volunteer work in the D.C. community. Eight men and women live in the Positive Force communal house in Arlington, Virginia. Around 30 attend the bi-weekly meetings. Hundreds go to the Positive Force benefit concerts. from just my friends in high school was that you just do it. You know, they were in bands, they were just learning how to play, but they were hysterical, they were really fun, and they loved to perform, and they wrote really great songs and put out their own tapes and all that stuff. Punk rock is ultimately a very challenging, even revolutionary kind of idea. And that is that people are not nearly so stupid or pathetic as society seems to believe that they are that really we have the, con the ability to run our own lives a whole lot more, to live our own lives a whole lot more than society gives us credit for. Punk rock can be more than just loud music and people screaming and rebellion. Punk rock can be, it can be beautiful, it can be change, it can be being an individual and helping other people. The vast majority of my life, I don't want to be entertained. And with dealing with music, I don't want it to just be entertainment. I want it to be something more, because it's just too powerful an instrument to be left in the hands of people who have nothing to say, or worse, they have society's message to give, you know, rock and roll all night and party every day, or, you know, oh, I'm in love with you, why don't you love me, you know, or, you know, buy my product, please buy it now, make me rich, make you slow and stupid. The most important thing is, like, my personal growth. And if punk doesn't, if what I think punk is doesn't fit that, then fuck punk. Kristen, Andrew, and Jenny operate a record label, Simple Machines, from a room in the Positive Force house. When Jenny and Brad started it off, they wanted to just document what was going on in D.C. outside of the kind of discord, very big stuff. Um, because there were, there were a lot of bands around. At, that are really good and and so it's basically a lot of seven inch compilations with one song from a lot of different bands. I guess we have five singles out now and another two that are on their way to being out and one 12 inch and another 12 inch on its way to come out. But um, and cassettes, we distribute a lot of our friends things um, and we make clothes as well, we, we silk screen used clothing with our little sprocket logo, which is right here. So we trade ads with other people or, you know, give them free records if they'll put an ad in their little zine in, in Florida or something. So that's another thing. You realize that 
uh, power of trading. You get lots of fun stuff in the mail and get to send stuff away. It ends up much being much better. The barter system is great compared to money, you know? <laughs> we make enough money to continue, uh, but one of the driving ethics of it is that we, that people are pay too much in the record stores. Um, so we try and keep our prices really low, just enough to cover our costs. We try to make it personal. We write long letters to everyone who who sends away for records and we, we also put together a packet that tells everybody how to put out records and how to start shows and how to do all that kind of stuff. Like the whole sassy thing was to try to teach girls they could put out records and they could get in touch with us and we'd help them do it. So. Who joins Positive Force? The kids that get involved with it are kids that probably don't fit in with you know, the in crowd at school or whatever, and it gives them a chance to be with other people that are like them and to feel a sense of identity and a sense of belonging that they may not get in their regular life if Positive Force didn't exist, and I think that's really great. Back in northeastern Montana, they thought I was insane. You know, my, my sister became seriously in, uh, she lived in, uh, in Idaho, became seriously concerned about like my mental state as she was like finding out that I was like deeply in love with a band called the Sex Pistols and you know. <laughs> Most of the people in my high school think I'm just a big freak, you know, and like I don't think they even really care what I think or what my politics are. And if if I did tell a lot of people, I think it would just be an excuse to label me as like a liberal communist or you know a politically correct fascist or something like that. A lot of people like house me about my political views or something, really? but generally I can stifle them just by talking to them or put, making them put their foot in their mouth. You know, when I was in high school, I was, and even in junior high school, I was basically given a yellow star David. You know, you were teased, you were jeered at, you were threatened, you were assaulted, and then you get articles in the Washington Post that says what to do when your kid goes punk. Well, I think, you know, for a lot of people that the schools and the parents are definitely not doing their jobs. They're not um, telling their kids, you know, that they're special, yeah, they're that they're very unique. Um, I, I mean, I might just like this, but I really believe a lot in what, like, Fred Rogers says, Mr. Rogers, and um, what Leo Biscaglia talks about, you know, that you are special. <laughs> I know that Mark especially really tries to reach out to people that uh, have dreams and ideas and ideals of the world and about themselves. One day someone said, we were at a Fugazi, she goes, oh wow, there's Mark Positive Force Anderson. I go, really? Wow. So I jumped up and talked to him and lucky for me the next, next meeting was the next day and I went and I just got involved from the start and it was great. Like I think it was about January 2nd I saw Fugazi at the 930 Club and like Mark Anderson from Positive Force was out there, like, set up, and I stood around and talked to him for a while. How did you guys first find out about Positive Force? Oh, man, we've been, we've going, been going to shows, to shows forever. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I mean, it started out as mainly a music thing when I was younger, like, early years of high school. Yeah. But they sponsor most of the DC shows. What was so great about the show on Friday night with Fugazi yeah. and Citizen Fish and Cringer, it was, a, it was like a punk rock conference and there was so much stuff out there yeah I know because I like I like went to my car like right before I started so I could like put a literature that I had gotten there and then like halfway through the show there's all this new stuff yeah it was so great I mean suddenly there's people coming up with people I'd never seen with zines or they're free they're free and they but hey yeah. can I just put this out here I'm like put it out of course you can for the past week like us and a whole bunch of other people have been slaving over this booklet. And this has pretty exciting information on the Clinic Def Defense Task Force, um, on pro-choice and anti-choice organizations, um, stuff about positive force in general, and then like individual people's opinions on this. Okay? Yeah. yeah, I definitely think they've they've increased my awareness about a lot of things, and also some things you kind of I kind of want to know about, but it's just too much trouble trying to find out about it. And this makes like everything so accessible, and it helps me to think. Do you see them picking up flyers and booklets and stuff? Yeah, they do. I mean, to a large extent. I mean, people pick them up. I don't know how much they read them, but I think they absorb something. Especially if they come to enough of them, they start to absorb it. You know, a lot of people. We get a lot of people that come into the group, you know, and they, you know, evolve for a while, and then they, you know, go off and do something on their own. A lot of people come from high schools. When they're out of high school, they go off to college often. Um, they're not here anymore. They can't be part of Positive Force DC. Same thing with the people in college. They graduate and, you know, they go to do their own thing. I 
that's life. It's hard sometimes because I love a lot of these people and I have really, I'm really attached to them. And then they leave. It's not never easy. Young people have a chance to plan and carry out something on their own without having to have an adult chaperone like you do if you want to, you know, organize something in high school or without having to, like, go by some, you know, formula that, you know, whereas you have to have a lot of money before you can put on a, a rock show, you know. We're having an alternatives festival, which is a two-day outdoor festival where bands play and speakers come and talk about alternatives. And um, I said, oh, well, I know a lot of poets that do political stuff in D.C., you know, maybe you should call them. And they said, well, why don't you call them or why don't you set it up? And so I did, you know, I was in charge of all these poets, and it was amazing to me that I was only 15, but I could, you know, get grown-up poets who were professional and performed in, you know, poetry spaces all over D.C. to come and perform for free. I was getting tired of just paying my money, going in, standing there, watching the band, leaving. And that got really tedious to me, and like I wanted to do something, I wanted to help out. And the, with Positive Force, I got to, I got to haul equipment in, I got to help set things up, I got to actually be a part of what was going on. Like the Coffee House series at DC Space, which lets weird young bands who haven't had a chance to play out, to play out. Well, we were just sitting around one day and they go, you need somebody to do the Coffee House in March. I said, oh, I'll do it. <laughs> So it's pretty, pretty casual. I was kind of lucky in a way because, well, one band's mine, so I knew they could play. Like some people at my school think I'm cool because I'm involved in putting on Fugazi concerts, you know? It's, get, it's like, would almost get me a little status to be a punk and to be in with the punk community. But the thing about it is anyone who gives a fuck about anything can be a part of Positive Force. Because there's practically no ageism at all. I mean, Mark Anderson is, I think, about 35, 36, 37, I think. I don't know. I can't remember. But, uh... I didn't even think I noticed the age difference, really. Besides, like, he's been around longer than me and he can talk about more stuff than me. Punk rock people, like, younger punk people call me Mr. Anderson, which, you know, is, for me is both very scary and also sort of an insult. And one of them, the last time the guy did it to me, I, I took him aside and just said, you know, really kindly, it's like, my name's Mark, how are you doing? <laughs> you know, Mr. Anderson, just dump it, you know? <laughs> Every Positive Force concert is a benefit. My name is Jonas, and I'd like to welcome you all to the Positive Force benefit for the free clinic. Yeah, um, this is a benefit for the Washington Area Clinic Defense Task Force, which protects the reproductive health clinics in Washington, D.C. from um, anti-abortion extremists, like Operation Rescue. Before Fugazi goes on, I want to just remind you all that this is a benefit tonight. It's a benefit for the Washington Peace Center Whatever you do, do yourself a favor and check out what they do because they will help you get closer to the truth. And I think that's what we want. We want the truth. We don't want a bunch of fucking lies. Positive Force is putting on shows that we ourselves pay to get into. We pay to get in to work our asses off because we believe in this. And because that matters more to us than money. If we were going and talking about all the money that we've generated in our Positive Force shows, we just give it all away. It's like, that's, for most people, they say, that's fucking insane. They would just not believe it. Some people don't believe it. We could make a whole lot of money for our charities, probably, if we increased our ticket prices. For us, it's more important to keep it accessible to, to all sorts of people, because we're not here for the rich people. We're here for all the people, and, and maybe even especially for the poor people. And, um, you know, if somebody doesn't have money at one of our shows, even for the $5, they won't get turned away. It's very important for us to try to pursue those things, keeping the door price very low, making sure all, everyone can get in, trying to do our shows in places like Sanctuary Theater where our audience gets to see another part of America, a different part of America that's not the suburban, clean, affluent part. Also, where our rent money goes to help organizations that are doing good works. Positive Force admits people of all ages to their shows. Yeah, I think that's I think that's really cool. I mean, I I am not would not be old enough to go to any show that wasn't all, all ages. So, kind of would suck if I was living in some other place because I know a lot of other places don't have all ages shows. I go other places, and the idea of five dollar shows all the time and of just 
really relaxed atmosphere and there's no drinking, there's no smoking. That's really foreign in a lot of places. I don't like breathing cigarette smoke. It's foul. It's disgusting. And I don't like people slobbering all, alcohol all over me either. It's like, and people drink alcohol, always getting into fights. This certainly isn't subversive. Just like doing drugs or using alcohol certainly isn't subversive. It plays right into the hands of those who want to control you. It's like you're much easier to control when you're drugged out or when you're, you know, looped out on alcohol. My favorite thing is the protest, the punk percussion protest we did across in the White House on January 12th with, um, with Fugazi um, playing afterwards. And part of the reason why I say that is because it was just such a hard thing to do and it was so scary to do because we just didn't know, you know, we didn't know the most basic thing, whether the stage was going to stand up against the crowd. It almost didn't, but it did. We had this, this protest and fucking punk rock concert in front of the White House. You know, the center of the power in this, obviously in this world. A thousand, 1,500 people banging on drums and oil barrels and, you know, pots and pans and tin cans and bottles and just making the most god-awful racket. And for a message. I think that most kids, especially when I started the group, joined the group because they were um, feeling frustrated by the amount of shit work they were expected to do at the you know, interesting places where they volunteered their time. When you're young and have a lot of energy, you know, it, it's, I mean, it's more of an immediate thing. You want to see the results of what you're doing. Yeah, it's kind of funny because my parents never have to discipline me or anything and I'll, I'll go out on the weekends and like they don't have to worry. It's like, I'm going to go out and feed the homeless now. Once a month, Positive Force members deliver meals to shut in elderly people. All three times that I've done meal delivery, I've done the same route and the people on the route, a couple of them have gotten to know me and, and you know, are glad to see me. And that makes you feel really good to think that somebody who's you know, very lonely and has very few friends and very few visitors and really has a very depressing life, the fact that, the, that I've spent maybe a total of 15 minutes ever talking to them has made them a little bit happier or whatever. We went to Martha's Table, which is a homeless you know, a place that delivers meals to the homeless and that was really great because we made sandwiches and it was really hands-on and you know we were right there making sandwiches knowing that they were going to go into the mouth of someone who was hungry and could actually eat them whereas before we we're giving money to a, an organization that we know was going to do that which is great but you know we took it one step further and we actually went down there and helped there are some people in Positive Force that have been involved with politics and organizing. Uh, you know, Kristen works for NOW, National Organization for Women, and Mark has worked with different things, and, and Sean has done a lot of neat things. My official title is, the, is an action organizer, so I organize a lot of rallies in D.C. and um, help people that are doing actions and demonstrations in other parts of the country and end up talking to a lot of college campus people. and do research as well. And for actually having impact on people's lives, I see it. I work as an outreach person uh, going to help low-income elderly people in inner city DC. This past week, I spent a significant part of that week working with one specific person who is a 94-year-old blind woman who's very poor. Um, she has been refusing to see a doctor forever and ever. This past week she started falling down like every day. She stopped eating. She refused to see a doctor, refused to go to the hospital. She couldn't even make it to the bathroom. We came in one day, uh, on, uh, on Thursday we came in, she was sitting in a pool of urine. She couldn't move off a chair in, 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 her, in her kitchen. We managed to get her into a hospital, finally after just, you know, incredible effort, and it worked. And, you know, it's like I said, sometimes it's almost too much, but the fact is that if it weren't for me and the other people doing my job, she'd probably be dead now. I work at the Arlington Co-op, which is cool, because it's a co-op and it's an alternative to big business working. Uh, Sean works there too, right? Yeah, so, which is kind of annoying because we tend to get on each other's nerves working and living at the same place. So, you know, these can be a pain. Something about like the food co-op, you know, it seems like 
to a lot of people it seems pretty tame, you know. It's like they'd much rather be, you know, doing a civil disobedience or marching in the streets and screaming at someone. But then if they go back home and, you know, buy all their food at Giant or 7-Eleven, they're supporting large corporations almost exclusively, you know. You're not going to find much in a 7-Eleven or a Giant that's made by a, you know, cooperatively owned or by a collective or by a nonprofit. So, you know, and that's one of the main things you do in your life is you, you buy food. Politics to me isn't politics, it's just something that in my day-to-day -day life, it's like my own personal moral code of conduct. There's no way for any one person to change his whole fucking world, but you can change your life. And that's what I ask people to do, you know. When they see something wrong, you know, try to do something about it, starting with what you're doing to help that injustice go on. Personal politics, personal revolution, there's so many things one can do. I mean, by not eating meat, you're not supporting a bullshit industry. By not buying CDs, you're not supporting a bullshit industry. By being a nice person, you're not supporting bullshit, being mean. Eight people rent rooms in the Positive Force House. The landlord lives in West Virginia and never visits. The Positive Force House exists almost as a mission unto itself in Positive Force because we try to live in a way that is different from the mainstream values that, you know, value structure that we, you know, say that we oppose. You know, we try to make decisions here consensually. We try to keep hierarchy away. It's hard, but you try. Um, we try to recycle a lot of stuff out of this house, try to recycle most of what we use. Um, we also have certain rules, quote unquote, um, that we don't want drugs, including alcohol, in the house. We don't want people smoking in the house. We don't want meat in the house. We try to open up our house to help as many people as we can. There are people almost all the time staying here at different points, including like a 90-year-old man who was evicted who came and lived downstairs for like three weeks, saved him from being homeless. Um, the person last night who um, who was just wasted, and if if I left her on the street or in the hands of her also drunk and abusive boyfriend, you know who knows what would have happened. You know, I just started hanging out here, and then I was getting fucked over with uh, school, and I just didn't like it. I was thinking, well, I don't think I'm going to school next semester, and I don't want to go back to my parents' house because that's even worse. And Mark, you know, with open arms, and everybody was just like, yeah, come on, move in. Great. So it just worked out, and now I have my little shithole here, and it's all I need, really, it's all I need. Sometimes the dishes don't get done, but, you know, it's like Punk Rock Central, all the information passes through here, and whenever something in Positive Force happens, it, it originates here, so I find out about it. You know, it's a center of a lot of activity. If you need a sound man, you know, you might even have one in your house, you know, that kind of stuff. You can, just everybody is doing things, and it really builds on itself, you know. People can help each other do things all the time. Most of the people involved in Positive Force don't eat meat. Actually, I try to be something called a vegan, which is, means that you try not to use any animal products in your life, basically, both in your food and your clothing. When I first got into vegetarianism, I was like, wow, I gotta tell all my friends, they'll be so glad to hear. And they're like, oh, shut up, oh, you're wrong, no, you're wrong, shut up. And I was just like, oh, why don't you listen? And that got me in a lot of trouble, all my friends got tired of hearing about it. Um. And I, I think it's really hard, even on the, on the personal level, to give up, you know, what, like what you were talking about, give up something that feels good or tastes good or that's easy. I mean, you know, meat. You open a can of tuna fish, you got your protein for the day. I really like the taste of meat, and I, I definitely would, would rather eat it if it was just something that, you know, because I like to eat meat, but I, I can't do it because I feel like it's, it's not my right to take something that I don't need away from another living creature. Oh, well, I was a vegetarian for six months before my parents realized it. And as soon as they figured it out, what do you mean? I just didn't eat my meat. And then um, when they Would figured you throw it, it away when they were No, no, I just, you know, they just wouldn't notice. You know, they wouldn't. I mean, my parents were the kind of, oh, Jenny, you haven't been eating, you know, you haven't finished or whatever. But, uh, yeah, when it came down to it, um, when she realized what was going on, she called my physician and made me an appointment and, you know, it was very worried and you know made sure that he would check everything out and I was in perfect health and they left me alone after that. I don't know how a lot of people can do it at home. There's this 
Aaron, this one kid who comes to meetings occasionally, he said he was vegan, and I took him, I drove him home one day. He lives out in Manassas, and it's like in the middle of rural Virginia. It's about, I don't know, I guess it was a half hour or more away, and I couldn't believe he was living out there. And when he said he was vegan, I was like, wait a sec, that's, how can you do that? Because my parents aren't really supportive of it. What do you mean? And, uh, they eat? Yeah, they eat meat and stuff, and they kind of taunt me sometimes, and like, I mean, I didn't get as much to eat, of course. <laughs> So it's, it's pretty hard, yeah. It's not easy. In a world where the whole society is set up to sort of push you in one direction, and there's huge, huge billions of dollars being made by people who benefit from the status quo, you're not going to find a great deal of support for radical alternatives to that status quo. And so? It's very important for people who see past that reality to try to support, to try to offer alternatives, to offer encouragement to young people. It's definitely like a support group, just knowing there's people around that believe these things and actually feel this way. It was weird, you know, because like maybe three years ago when I was just was like in high school and thinking, oh, I want to go to D.C., I want to be part of Positive Force. Oh, I was just like, you know, I just thought of like everyone here is just like so holy or whatever i mean anyone can do this anyone can do it i think the greatest thing that positive force has shown me is something i could have shown myself a long time ago is that if i put my ideas if i work hard i can pull things off you know i mean life is so amazing there's so much potential so much possibility but everywhere you go we're all so scared and so cowardly and so lazy and society doesn't help much at all. Society is ready to just sell us all this shit, you know, to anesthetize us, to put us to sleep. Well, I don't want to sleep. And I don't want to help people sleep. I want to wake up, and I want people to wake up. Because if we don't, the only life that we can ever be sure that we're going to have is going to be stolen from us.